So as an example of a long bone, we have the femur. So uh, the femur again is this uh, bone here that goes from our hip to our knee. Uh, so we have first the femoral head, and then it goes down to our knee here, where we have, so we have cartilage covering the femoral head here, and also cartilage covering here at the knee. Okay, so if we look at long bones, specifically at the femoral bones, we have different parts. Uh, so first we have uh, the, uh, these sections that are here. So this will be called the head, but it's also called the epiphysis. So these are like the uh, parts of the bone which are in the in opposite sides, right? Then we have uh, this part here that is going to uh, connect the center of the bone to the extreme of the bone. So this is called metaphysis. And then finally, we have the center of the bone, which is called the diaphysis. So inside these uh, three different regions, we have other types of uh, bone structure. Uh, so uh, here in the outside of the bone, we are going to have this part here, which is made of, is called the compact bone. Then here in the epiphysis, so we are going to have more compact bone here, right? But in the epiphysis, we are going to have this spongy bone, which is going to be very porous bone. And here in the diaphysis, between uh, the compact bones at both sides of the bone, we are going to have the bone marrow, which is the medullary cavity. Okay, so, uh, but this uh, structure is very different in comparison to the flat bones, for example, the parietal bone in our school. So let's look at that a bit more in detail now. So for flat bones, for example, the parietal bone, this uh, structure is very different and we don't have epiphysis, metaphysis and diaphysis. We have other two different structures. So this will be kind of a cross-section of our parietal bone, right? So we'll have here in the border of our bone, we are going to have here the compact bone. And this region of compact bone in the flat bone is going to be called the cortex. So we have another cocteus here on the opposite side, which is also compact bone. And then inside between the two cortexes, we are going to have this spongy bone region. Which is called the diplo, the diploi. Okay, so uh, we, again, we don't have the epiphysis, metaphysis, and diaphysis. We only have the compact bone or cortex, and then inside the two cortexes, we have the um, spongy bone or diploi. Uh, and uh, another difference as well is that here we have the bone marrow cavity or the medullary cavity where we have the mesenchymal uh, stromal cell niche and also the hematopoietic niche, and here we don't have that region. Uh, also, uh, this... Um, uh, this spongy bone region here in the compact bone is going to be highly vascularized. And the same here in our long bones. So our long bones are going to have uh, to be highly vascularized and the vascularization is a really important part of the process of bone formation and also the process of repair. And not only vascularization, but they are going to have to be highly innervated. And innervation is still a topic that we are wishing to understand and uh, have some experiments in the lab addressing that topic. Okay, uh, so as we have seen the long bones and the flat bones, oh, 
flat. The flat bones have a very different structure, but uh, then uh, they have a lot of similarities as well. So let's look at the similarities now. So if we look at the similarities, so we have two uh, similarities. So we have the composition of the ECM. So in the ECM in both, we are going to have this connective tissue or fibrous tissue part, which is made out of collagen, specifically collagen type one. So I'm uh, drawing here uh, the triple helix of collagen. I'm really, really bad at different uh, drawing triple helixes. So this will be the fibrous part of the bone ECM, which is the collagen. And then attached to the collagen, we are also going to have this inorganic component, which are the calcium phosphate crystals or hydroxyapatite. So calcium phosphate or also known as hydroxyapatite crystal, crystals. So again, we have two components, the collagen or fibrous component, and also we have the uh, calcium phosphate crystals or, hydro or hydroxyapatite crystals, uh, which are, um, so our bones are basically formed by collagen, and then we have also hydroxyapatite, which is going to give the toughness. If we didn't have the uh, collagen uh, part of our bone, our bones will break very easily. Uh, but uh, if we didn't have the hydroxyapatite component in the bone, our bones will deform very easily as well because uh, collagen is very viscoelastic. Okay, and the other thing that is common between long bones and the flat bones are going to be different types of cells. So if we take a cross-section of any of these bones, uh, we are going to uh, see the different cells that we have. So let's make this cross-section here. So in the inside of the bone, we are going to have the medullary cavity, specifically that's uh, very relevant here for the long bones. So inside the medullary cavity, we are going to have the stem cells, the mesenchymal stromal cells, and also the hematopoietic stem cells. Then uh, if we go to the spongy wall bone and also, so this will be kind of like the cortex or it or the outside of the bone. If we go a bit outside, we are going to start having uh, these other cells that are called the osteocytes. So the osteocytes are the cells that are going to, the main cells that are going to form the bone. And they have like this body with these protrusions here, right? So these are called osteocytes. So these uh, cells are really important for bone remodeling and also for fracture repair. Then uh, here in the cortex, in the outside of the bone, we are going to have these other cells that are called the osteoblasts. So these cells are really important because they are general, going to generate this ECM. They are going to go to generate the collagen and also the hydroxyapatite particles that are going to give the bone its a specific mechanical properties. So this is really high toughness. And finally, here we'll have the osteoblasts. The osteoblasts are special because they are multinucleated, so they have more than one nucleus. Osteoblasts. Okay, so the osteoblasts, uh, I, told, uh, I talk about them already, so they are the ones that are here in the outside. In uh, more in the inside, we are going to have the osteoclasts. So the osteoclasts are going to do the process of osteolysis. They are going to destroy the bone or metabolize the bone matrix and destroy the bone matrix. They are going to liberate all the calcium and also the phosphate in, uh, the, um, uh, in here in the, in the bone to our system. Okay, uh, also uh, it's very important. So uh, the osteocytes and the osteoblasts, uh, they are generated uh, through the mesenchymal stromal cells. Uh, the osteoclasts, they have a different origin. So they are uh, developed uh, from the hematopoietic stem cells, which are the stem cells that are going to give birth to all the blood types. So their origin is also different. 
Okay, so now that we are finished uh, with the uh, different types of bone, the bone functions, and, all, and then the structure of the long bones and the flat bones, we are going to look a bit more in detail into how bones are developed, how the long bones and also the flat bones are developed uh, through the endochondral ossification and also the intermembranous ossification process. Be right back.